Um, <laughs> we're very lucky to have, uh, is it Winder or Winder? Winder. Winder. Dylan Winder with us today. And Dylan is the head of the humanitarian response group in the Conflict Humanitarian and Security Department Chase at DFID. Uh, previously, d uh, Dylan worked for DFID in Yemen, Tajikistan and Gaza, and before that as a Rural Livelihoods Advisor. He's led DFID's research communications team, which pr uh, aims to uh, improve the impact and uptake of research. And before joining DFID, he was a researcher with the National Resource Institute and the International Rice Research Institute. It's a long time ago. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Dylan, the donor perspective will yeah. be very helpful. Okay, well, look, thanks very much, John. And first of all, thanks for a really inspiring report. I mean, I, I, I'm going to highlight a few things from it as I, as I talk, but I thought it was a, a, a great report. Um, I'm going to talk about the wider um, issues and, and how this report can influence DFID more broadly, because I, although I sit on the Syria program board, I'm not involved in the sort of day-to-day -day management of our Syria program. So, so let me start just by saying, you know, this is something that we, we really take very seriously. I think most of you know our, um, the international or our international development minister, Lynn Featherston, has really been championing this whole agenda. Um, she's, she's particularly interested in putting this as, a, as some kind of marker in, in the discussion post-MDG uh, and really raising this as an important issue internationally. And I think that the report really adds a lot of evidence and value to, to, to those sorts of discussions. Um, I think yesterday was an interesting example. I mean, I, d I don't know how many of you in the room know, but Help Agent and uh, Handicap International presented a, a petition to us with 80,000 signatures to, to from UK public and others, and I'm sure... Alima and Francis can talk about that later on, but you know, in terms of raising awareness, and, and so, the, so the UK public is really supportive of this, and obviously we, as a as a government department, really need to take notice of what the UK public is passionate about. So I think that, you know all, all the timing is right for some of this, and uh, along with the, I, the IDC report. Um, so, mm -hmm. just in terms of sort of some of the things that really sh quite shocked me actually from the report, that I, I didn't necessarily realise. You know, things like the, the registration issues. I mean, it's great, Arusha, that you've talked about UNHCR recognising the problems and, and, and wanting to, to kind of address some of those, and maybe we can work together in some way on that. I think things around um, the numbers of older people um, who have a chronic disease and the whole impact around that, I don't think that's something that we, we necessarily look at in our sort of day-to-day -day assessments on the humanitarian side in DFID. Um, interesting statistics that men account for 72% of injuries. Now, I know mm. that that's kind of obvious when you think about it mm. now, but you know, mm. we need to therefore respond to that. Um, I liked your, it wasn't really an example, but the lack of trained mental health experts meant you couldn't actually even do the evaluation on that. So, you know, that says something around the capability mm -hmm. out there. And, and you know, th there's a big, this is a big issue for us. And I, I asked, in fact, we, we have a, a, a surge capability of about 250 people, um, consultants that we can put into um, emergencies. I don't think any of those are specialists in this area. So there's something for us to think about in terms mm -hmm. of how do we both raise awareness amongst those people, but also you know, should we and should we be encouraging others to have more experts in, in this area? Um, I also thought um, some of the issues around uh, amputation are quite interesting. Um, mm. Particularly, th this isn't the first time I've heard that. In Haiti, mm. for example, mm. I think we mm. funded some work through um, Handicap International to look at um, how we could stop a lot of the amputation so that people's limbs could be saved. So there are, there are sort of relatively simple approaches I think you can take to, to make a huge difference on some of these things, and we should learn these lessons. Um, and then I think, you know, some of the, the issues around daily living, burdens of families, um, the choices that individuals have to make were really quite striking. Um, so on, in terms of then kind of moving more towards our own programming, so on Syria, I mean, the UK, w we're the second biggest donor. We've committed 600 million over, over three years um, for Syria and the region. Um, and we've also committed 7 million pounds to, um, I, I think is again through Handicap International, might be Handicap in and Help Age, but to, to basically uh, support physical rehabilitation, provide prosthetics, mobility aids, uh, mobility aids even, support to... Um, seven and a half thousand people, classes vulnerable so they can access food and some cash um, work. And I think cash work will be become an important part of, an increasingly important part of our programming. And it'd be interesting to see, you know, the, the specific implications of, of doing that in terms of addressing some of the issues that, that you talked to in the, in the report. And I think, you know, we will look at this as an issue. I mean, I think the report today 
I think we need a discussion internally with the Syria team on, on you know, what are the implications as we move forward, as we, as we program. <coughs> but there are other donors out there as well, and we also need to be talking, talking to them. Um, in terms of specifically on the, on the sort of humanitarian policy side of DFID, uh, I mean, first of all, it's really difficult for us to respond to this kind of agenda if we don't get in high quality proposals from NGOs, UN, others. You know, if, if, if you're not doing the assessments yourselves, data ag aggregated, then it's very difficult for us to do that for you. So I think what we can do is make some, put, put in some guidance and requirements that we expect from you in order to fund programming that might ha provide a bit of a, uh, uh, I suppose, a bit of a stick, really, to, to help people to, to, to recognise this as an important issue. Um, we are looking at how the UK will feed into and respond to the, the World Humanitarian Summit in 2016. So again, I think this is quite quite a, a good issue for us to explore, you know, w what difference do we need to do? How, how, how do we... How do we respond to such things when you see natural um, catastrophes and conflict increasing? So, you know, these are going to, and I th again, I think that, you know, the level of injury through conflict in Syria and how we respond to that, we probably don't nec necessarily have the right mechanisms yet to do that. So something to think about there. Um, I also think that... Um, you know, it's, it's, we don't think enough about elderly people, actually. I mean, I think, you know, and, and older people. So people losing carers, pe you know, how do we deal with those sorts of things? And we don't have the right answers for that either. And I hope that, again, some of the recommendations you made, I hope that there can be some more specific thinking about, OK, so what kind of activities should we be supporting in the field? How can we really make, make a difference? Uh, and, you know, how can we work through mm -hmm. the UN and NGOs and others to, 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 to deliver on some of these issues? Um, and we can do better. So I thought there are some really quick wins I think that DFID can commit to today uh, to, to, help, to help at least um, start to tackle some of these sorts of issues. We will include disability and age disaggregation data as part of um, requirements for funding proposals. So we will, we will need to look at how we do that, but I can commit to doing that. We're looking at um, doing similar things for broader protection, mm -hmm. violence against men and girls, and I think it's a, re it's a real quick win to, to, to look at this issue alongside those. Um, We've agreed that we will develop an internal how-to note. Now, this isn't going to help you all, but what it will do is it will raise awareness amongst our country programmes and our advisors in terms of what sorts of things they ought to be looking at and, and how might they assess um, these sorts of issues when they are designing humanitarian programmes at the country level. And we hopefully will be able to work with HelpAge and, and Handicap International to, to pull that together. Um, I think that um, something else we can do is influence others. So, for example, when we support CHFs, we should be looking at some of these these sorts mm -hmm. of issues in country. How, how do you know, how do we yeah. ensure they're they're recognised? And we also fund things like the Start Network. So, I I will be interested to look at the Start Network, which is going to respond to small scale emergencies. Is it tackling those kind of issues? Not just Help Age and Handicap International but across mm. the piece. So, you know, how does Save the Children do this? How does Oxfam mm. do it? How mm. do World Vision Action Aid others do it? Mm. So I think, I think there's, there's some things there. Um, we are um, also funding a new programme, the Disasters and Emergency Preparedness Programme, which is about capacity building. We've already had a preliminary discussion on that, and I think there's some, some uh, areas there that we can do to support the development of national capacity in this area. So, so, so something to, to, to think about. And then our rapid response facility. Again, we need to look at how in rapid response situations are we better able to um, resource this kind of issue. But as I said before, unless we get the proposals in from, from you guys, it's very difficult <laughs> for us to then, to then um, to fund these kind of issues. And that's why I think it's, it's about a partnership I see going forward. W you need to do more to build your expertise, to build your own data systems, to be able to, to, to put stuff to donors and to continue the, the sort of advocacy based on the evidence that, that you're providing here. And then we need to be better at ensuring that those things that we fund are um, able to address the issues that are coming out in the report. So I'll stop there. Thank you very much, Dan. Um, obviously, very open to uh, many of the ideas uh, in the report and also some very 
tangible little commitments there, I thought, which, w which was great. Big commitments. Big commitments. <laughs> okay, well, let's go through them, make sure I've got them all. Um, <laughs> so there's the one on disaggregated data um, that you're going to do an internal how-to note to, to make sure that your advisors and staff know more about the issue and how, how to deal with it. Um, influencing the CHFs um, and looking at how others... Uh, incorporate disability uh, 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 and other issues into their um, thinking and practice, including the START network. Um, uh, then uh, you'll be looking at your own rapid response uh, capacity as well. And the, I, I, I'm not sure I know this one, the Disasters Emergency Capacity Program is, what, it's what's a, that? It's a new program that, mm. that uh, we're funding through the START network, CDAC. Okay. And there's an innovation window. It's it's um, it's not quite launched yet, but we, it'll be launched very soon. But okay. but that's specifically about building national capacity to be better yeah. at response. Yeah. And I think this is an important area that we, we should look at as part of that program. Five commitments there from Diffid. Very very good. But also a, a challenge or a, 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 an invitation, I guess, to to all agencies to improve the quality of their own assessments and thinking to enable you to be able to, if you like, monitor. Uh, things with your stick <laughs> and fun things. You know, and fun it, things. You know, if you're not putting in the right th proposals, yes. Yes. we're not going to be able to fund stuff. Yes. So, so I think it's a it's a yes. it's a two, it's a two way, two way thing. thing. It's a partnership. Mm -hmm. That's brilliant. Um, so from uh, the donor, we're going to go to um, the academic community um, to uh, to Dawn Chatty, and Dawn is a professor of anthropology and forced migration and the director of the Refugee Studies Centre at Oxford University. She's a social anthropologist whose ethnographic interests lie in the Middle East, and her research interests include dispossession and forced migration in the Middle East. And her book on this subject was published in 2010. She is both an academic anthropologist and a practitioner, having developed her career in universities in the United States, Lebanon, Syria, and Oman, as well as with several development agencies. And so, Dawn, welcome, and over to you. All right, 